In this video, I will be sharing information regarding the history of lies the tobacco industry has built their business upon. In the early 1600s, the tobacco industry contributed to the induction of slavery in the United States. In 1650, tobacco first arrived in Africa where they used it as a currency. Later on, African slaves were forced to work on tobacco plantations years before they became a workforce in cotton fields. Today, this exploitation continues among this industry. In the United States, tobacco is largely farmed by migrant farm workers and they'll typically work from crop to crop since each crop has their own season. These migrant farm workers are not fairly compensated for their work. They don't have standard work benefits like paid sick leave, vacation, and retirement plans, and they also can't unionize, which is unfortunate because they are prone to being exploited and used as relatively cheap labor. Additionally, the tobacco industry has targeted specific populations such as minorities, the LGBTQ community, and people with mental illnesses. We know that they are notorious for doing this because they've literally told us. When the tobacco industries were sued by the states in 1990s, one of the results of that settlement was that the tobacco industries had to turn over all their internal documents, which they ended up sending by the truckload to Minnesota. It was here where they were all sorted through. This is just one of the quotes that was pulled from their internal documents that they turned over. In the early 1900s, the tobacco industry started a marketing plan they called Project Subculture Urban Marketing, or Project SCUM. The entire premise around this marketing campaign was to appeal to the LGBTQ community. They advertised in gay-oriented magazines, hosted bar nights targeting the community, and increased advertising targeting gay men. As a result, the LGBTQ community is now two times more likely than heterosexuals to take up smoking, e-cigarettes, and little cigars. Project Scum is just one example of their targeted advertising directed at a specific population. In 1994, executives representing the seven largest tobacco companies in the United States testified before Congress. They were individually asked if they believed nicotine was not addictive and they all lied in court saying that they believed nicotine to be not addictive. Two years later, they were all under federal investigation for potentially lying under oath, and they were no longer leading their cigarette companies. I want to mention that big tobacco companies did this despite the Surgeon General of the US putting out an entire report on the addictiveness of nicotine in 1988, just a few years prior to them being under oath.